All right, I want to start off the review videos by going sequentially. So tonight will be 1.1, 1.2, and then I'll make videos moving forward uh, till we cover all of the topics for Unit 1. Well, 1.1, the objective is explain how the democratic ideals are reflected in the Declaration of Independence of the United States Constitution. All right, so democratic ideals are as listed. Limited government. The government's a limited. Natural rights. These are unalienable rights, rights that you're born with. Popular sovereignty. A government by the people, for the people, represents the will of the people. Republicanism, a form of government which we elect people to rep, represent us, and our will in Congress and in the government. And social contract, a contract between people and the government where government will uphold certain rights and the people will follow the rules and buy in and go from there. Well, if you're looking for these democratic ideals in the Declaration of Independence, you don't have to go any further then the second paragraph. Now, I'll let you read this by yourself because I'm going to attach these notes to this post, but I've taken the second paragraph and, I, and I've kind of taken some sentences from it to show you exactly what you're going to see here. All right, so this sentence, it says, all men are created equal and they're endowed by the creator with the certain inalienable rights that are among these life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's natural rights, okay? It's right up here. It's right in there. It's mentioned. Governments instituted among men deriving their powers from the consent of the government. That's popular sovereignty. A government by the people, for the people, represents the will of the people. And then we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they're endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, and whenever the form of government becomes destructive to these rights, or ends, it is right to the people to alter or abolish it. Hey, that's social contract. So if the government's not living up to its side of the contract, people can break the contract and form a new government that will. Now, when you're looking at the Constitution, a uh, couple places where you'll see some of these ideals. The, the preamble, we the people, right at the very beginning. Hello, that's popular sovereignty, expressing we the people. And then you're going to see social contract in, this, in, the, in the last part of the preamble here, where it outlines all these rights, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote general welfare, secure the blessings of liberty. Uh, we establish this constitution for the United States. So there it is. So they're stating right at the beginning that the government, these these are the rights that the government's going to uphold, uh, and these are the rights that are outlined in the Constitution. Now, as far as Republican form of government, you see it in Article 4, Section 4, where it guarantees that to every state a, in the Union a Republican form of government. So it's in the Constitution itself. And then a limited government. I'll even go a little bit further down here. I said, so think of the Constitution as, well, the Constitution is a sign of limited government, right? Think of it as a rule book for government. So the Constitution is, okay, government, Here's your rules. Here's how you're going to set up. Here's all the components that go into you. And here's a list of the powers that you have. And beyond these powers, you don't have them. All right? So you're not an all-powerful government. The powers that you have are listed in the Constitution. All right? Those powers and those powers only. So you're limited. So when we see things like the Ninth Amendment, which if you broke it down and tried to put it in simple language, it said all the rights not listed in the Constitution belong to the people. Yeah, absolutely. So, the Constitution does not give every single right that we can possibly think of to the government. The ones that aren't in there belong to the people. And the same thing for the Tenth Amendment here, too, is where it says, all right, limited government idea here, too. All right, so the power is not delegated to the United States, governed by the Constitution, fall to the states. So, once again, the government's limited with its powers, and the powers that aren't listed automatically fall to the states. Now, if you ever were in a bind and you were trying to figure out a way to explain limited government, don't go any further than Articles of Confederation either. All you would have to do is just list the weaknesses because ultimately what that government was was a severely limited government that really couldn't do much at all. And it really hurt. Uh, it, it really hurt in the long run. So if you want to list like couldn't tax, couldn't reg regulate interstate commerce, uh, couldn't establish an army or raise an army, whatever, those things matter. So that's what I'm, that's what the test is going to expect you to know, all right? Is that here's these democratic, democratic ideals. Uh, all right, now here's the Declaration of Independence, here's the Constitution, show us where they are. And if you listen to the video, you know exactly how to do that. So, take care, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.